be honest, most of us are looking for an excuse to keep a holiday going, and February 14th is no exception. Valentine's Day is usually a magical time for love and decadence, and for some, a dash of horror mixed with macabre and maybe supernatural. Also, candy is half price the day after. <laughs> Oh no, we forgot about something that used to be a pivotal thing during this time of love. Have you guessed it? If you guessed Cupid, then you would be absolutely right. So close the blinds, dim those lights, cuddle under your favorite blanket, and let's begin. Cupid hummed along to Whitney Houston's I will always love you. As he flew around looking for the next lucky person, it was the time of year Cupid was needed the most, and he took his job very, very seriously. Some people would call it simple, almost easy. Just fly around and shoot invisible arrows into people. And shortly after, others would flock around and immediately feel overwhelming feelings of love for them. It was a good job that took hard work, dedication, and concentration. This time only comes around once a year. Hmm, who's the lucky guy or gal today? Cupid thought to himself. And that's when he saw her. She was an average looking woman driving the speed limit down the highway. She was married and also had two teenage sons sitting in the back seat. Cupid could easily tell the love between her and her husband was dwindling and that her two teens in the back could barely stand her. His mind was made up. She needed his help. He flew lower to get a better shot, knocked an arrow and aimed and released. The invisible arrow was aimed oh so perfectly as it flew through the windshield and straight into the woman's heart. Uh, she clutched at her chest as the car started to veer and then proceeded to slam directly into the guardrail, causing the vehicle to flip over onto its side. Her unbuckled body immediately convulsed forward through the windshield Little pieces of glass begin cutting and clinging to her skin like parasites. The woman's body skidded across the concrete, tearing all the flesh from the bone until it came to rest 15 feet away. Her life slowly draining away. Her husband and kids, all unharmed, slowly climbed out of the vehicle. They rushed to her side and began pleading for God to spare her life. As she lay there dying, her husband and kids confessed their renewed love for her. The woman would be dead within minutes, and within a week she would have a funeral. Many would flock from all around to confess their feelings of love and share happy memories of the woman. <laughs> Cupid smirked, satisfied with another good job completed. But it was short-lived. His job had only just begun. Have you ever seen Cupid? I did. It was last year when I first saw him hovering over the trampled bouquets and fallen tears my friend shed as his unrequited love left him in that sorry state. I, I could barely see his hazy figure back then, somewhat like a winged teenager holding something elongated at his left hand. Yet, as he continued peering 
at my weeping companion, I could somehow sense the great sadness and tragedy in his gaze. Is this Cupid? As I continued puzzling upon myself as to whether I am hallucinating or not, he turned away from my companion and stared at the distance. I once again felt the great resolve bore upon his countenance, this time with an unspoken promise to fulfill his destiny. Despite what I saw, I somehow felt relieved at the end, feeling that my hunch was right. <sighs> I guess it will have a happy ending after all. Lucky guy. But it seems he is not quick enough to make things right, it seems. For it all came too late when we already heard the news that she had died in a car accident two days later. And my friend wasted no time falling in her footsteps. After finding an unsuspecting speeding truck to crash his hopes along with his life a day afterwards. After that, I started seeing him from time to time, accompanying those with downcast eyes and somber expressions that somehow spoke volumes of their struggles, love problems most likely. Albeit still hazy even after many encounters, I still feel awed as to how his gaze could bear so much gloom in it, always with that same resolve to bring help and justice to those heartbroken individuals. <laughs> Lucky them. Me, not so much. After finally catching the love bug, I finally understood how my friend must have felt back then, how it felt to admire, to care, to dream of it, and to remain dreaming never to be woken up from this nightmarish prison. Finally, after days of seemingly endless agony, he finally came. What took you so long? As my hopes sharpened up upon his arrival, so did his features. A solemn gaze peering from his handsome face, long hair, and a set of plumed butterfly wings, holding a... Wait, is that a golden club? Something feels off. You're Cupid, I, I mean, Eros, aren't you? I blurted out unconsciously. You're mistaking me for my clumsy brother, it seems. No way. My heart sank after hearing that, as it all dawned upon me. This, this can't be happening. That steely resolve he always seems to have towards his duty. What gave me awe back then, now filled me with dread. No. As the god of requited love turned his attention away, he left me six words that sounded like a death knell to me. Oh Lord, please no. Don't worry. Justice will be done. My world seemed to crumble right then. As Antarios, the punisher of unrequited love, left my vision. No! I killed Cupid. Not literally, of course. I imagine anyone would find it difficult to maim a mythical figure. What I mean is, I made sure no arrow of love would direct any man toward the woman of my dreams. I watched her from the shadows. Her hair, with its shining golden highlights, reminded me of rays of sunlight. She was my very own star, the celestial body around which my world revolved. I tried to capture her warmth in small ways. I had a framed photograph of her on my bedside table. Occasionally, I would glance over at it and bask in the warmth of her unmoving smile. Upon passing her by, I would brush up against her, letting my fingers trail for a prolonged moment against her skin. Yet, despite my love of her, I knew that she would never harbor the same desire for me. 
that cursed Cupid, before his demise, had pierced my own flesh with his barb. He just hadn't pierced hers. I watched as the delivery man pulled up. A moment later, he exited the van with a vase of two dozen yellow roses. Yellow was her favorite color. I had heard her saying it once, that it reminded her of little yellow finches that came to sing outside her window. Though I couldn't see it from this distance, I knew there was a card hidden amongst the stems. It read, One half of me is yours, the other half yours. My own, I would say, but if mine, then yours, and so all yours. It was a quote from Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. It encompassed all I felt for her. She owned every inch of my heart and soul, leaving nothing behind for anyone else. The card wasn't signed. I, I couldn't bring myself to put from your secret admirer. Nothing at all was better than those overused words. I knew the gift and message would confuse her, but I hoped that they would please her too. Let her know that someone out there loved her, admired her, craved her. She answered the door after the third knock. A look of surprise spread across her face. She took the flowers with a shy smile. The delivery man said something to her I couldn't hear, and she laughed. A familiar jealous rage rose from within me, and I vowed to take care of that man later just like I had taken care of the others. He left soon after, and she was alone once more. Unable to fight the tug of desire any longer, I moved up the front walkway towards the door. Easing it open, I made my way to the kitchen where she stood. It took a moment for her to register my presence. I saw the widening of her eyes, heard the catch of her breath. I moved forward and embraced her, Holding her to me tightly, I bent my head, and I whispered in her ear, Hi, Mom. I'm home. Eros looked down on New York City from his lofty space in the heavens. So many souls wandering around, he pondered, wishing for love and in need of help. Well, help? was exactly what was on today's menu. He fluffed the feathers in his wings and strapped on his satchel of magical arrows across his chest. There was no time to waste. What, what with Valentine's Day fast approaching? This time of year was like tax season for a Cupid. Starting out, he came upon a middle-aged couple walking through Washington Square Park. The first mark of the day... Eros drew his arrow back and watched it arc through the air, striking the man in the chest. The effects were immediate, as the man's arms wrapped around the woman and the two swooned together in the lane. At his next stop, a pair of young students were arguing outside of a campus bookstore. Ah, oh, young love, thought Eros, as soon as the arrow pierced her icy heart. Eros could see the anger melt from the girl's face. She gently touched her boyfriend's cheek, and the two embraced. Finally, two men were waiting in line at a coffee stand, and Eros just couldn't pass up the opportunity for love at first sight. He aligned the angle oh so perfectly, making sure the enchanted arrow would strike them at the same time, and let it fly. The men turned to each other with wide eyes and a subtle look of surprise, and understanding growing between them. <sighs> His work finally over, Eros headed home. He was tired, but happy as he thought of all the love and joy he had created. Tomorrow would be another busy day, but he thought with a sly smile, a Cupid's work was never done. Tonight on the 6 p.m. News Briefing by ABC7, your source for New York's breaking news. The New York Police Department finally received a break in the case of a sniper killing 
unsuspected victims around Manhattan today. Jack Iriskovich was detained at the Blue Heavens Loft in Greenwich Village. Early this morning, when investigators received a tip from a concerned neighbor, a bow and at least twenty homemade arrows matching the ones used in the murderous spree were found in the apartment, along with a set of homemade wings, appearing to be made out of pigeon feathers. Plucked pigeon feathers had been found at the site of Manhattan Community College attack. Iriskovich was taken forcefully from his apartment while screaming that his work wasn't finished. No clear motive was apparent for the homicides. my lovely lilies thank you so much for watching the new video if you can hit that subscribe and like button comment below and tell me your thoughts also don't forget to tap the little notification bell so you're always in the know on this channel as well guys you can always find me on Twitter Instagram snapchat and always you can hit me up in my emails Feel free to send me your stories whether they're fiction or totally true I'm always up for some great stories and oh, by the way, until next time, sweet dreams. <laughs>